How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about Exela. I know those questions are going to be coming in. Dre, what do you see this stock doing? So I made sure to put this video together. On the Friday, we see that it finished green. So we want to see that momentum continue. And we want to know what exactly does that look like? So I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you're a shareholder, you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're going to go over is a technical analysis. We're going to be taking a look at the overall price action. We want to know support. We want to know resistance. We want to know what it looks like in the bearish case scenario and as well as in the bullish case scenario. And then we're going to go on Fintel taking a look at the short interest information. The reason why this is important because it does have an impact on the way the stock performs. And then we're going to take a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know the buying and the selling behavior on the retail side and as well as on the institutional side. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more details so let's get to it so we're going to do a technical analysis for Exela. let's see how it performed on friday so it ended up closing at 80 cents being up 3.01 percent on the low it tested 78 cents and then on the high testing 83 cents when we take a look at the volume stats on the day you can see we traded at 54.965 million shares and the average volume over 10 trading days is at 114.123 million shares so what you notice we did have well below the average in regards to volume on the day but we still saw some strength inside of the stock now when we take a look at our chart which is a daily chart we can see from the RSI down below it is at 55.01 and then when we take a look at our moving averages here on the chart we are below the 200 day the 100 day the 50 day but we are above the 21 day EMA and as you can be seeing here Excel has been showing a good amount of price strength we've been seeing it form higher lows we know there's demand inside of the market we also have seen the fact that it's been able to hold up fairly well at this 78 cents level so going into tomorrow what I'd want to see us do is start making that move to get above 85 cents we ended up seeing 83 cents as a high on the day on the Friday so this is why I'm saying 85 is very achievable and most likely I'd want to see us get to the 50 day that is right around 89 cents and I feel once we can get to 89 we'll see some resistance right around 90 and then seeing what the stock would do from there I believe that we should be able to see some continued demand inside of the market especially if we have strength and tech and we should be able to get above that 90 range and what we want to look forward to yes is that test to one dollar we know this will be a psychological area there will be a lot of profit taking and so on but like I said demand is key and seeing if that buying pressure is coming in and we decide to have a pullback then of course I want to see us use a 21 day EMA as that main area of support I'm not looking for us to pull back to 70 cents but if we did do that things are still looking pretty good because then we can just consolidate and still look forward for that next move up but the moment we break through it that's where I start seeing a lot of weakness in the stock but the best case scenario for us to hold up at least 75 cents so we can make that move essentially to 90 cents sometime this week so now let's go on to the short interest information so we're going to take a look at the short interest information for Exela. So for the dark pool short volume ratio, it's at 54.15%. And then for the dark pool short volume, it is just over 21.29 million shares. Scrolling down further on the page, the short shares availability is at 150,000 updated 16 minutes ago. And then for the short borrow fee rate, it is at 2.28%. When we take a look at the history of the short volume ratio, we could see for the close of the third, it was at 51.05 and then for the close of the fourth so the Friday to just pass being at 54.15 so one thing that remains clear Exela does have short squeeze potential and it's part of the reasons why you see a lot of volatility inside of the stock and why I emphasize you want to have a game plan before jumping into this play so now let's move on to the order flow distribution now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for Exela. So we see here on the inflow is at 11.61 and then on the outflow it's at 11.58. So we ended up having an inflow day but it was still fairly close. Taking a look at the large it was 2.17. On the medium it was 6.79 and then on the small it was 2.65. Taking a look at the outflow side you can see on the large it was 2.40. On the medium it was 6.94 and then on the small 
overall, it was 2.24. Taking a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, you can see for February the 4th, for the Friday that just passed, it being that outflow of 0 0.23. And for the past five trading days, we have seen mainly outflows on the large scale side. Analyzing the numbers even further for the small scale orders that tends to represent the retail side, we had more buying than we had selling. And then when we take a look at what happened on the medium, we had more selling than we had buying. And then when we take a look at the large which represents whales, institutions, our funds, we had more selling than we had buying. And then when we take a look at the turnover ratio, it was at 29.74%. So again, not too surprised for a stock like Exla. It's pretty much a penny stock at the moment, so that's gonna come with a lot of volatility and it's gonna grab the attention of a lot of traders. And we also have seen that the price has been going up very consistently for the past five trading days. So again, it's gonna garner a lot of attention. So now let's move on to the final thoughts and we'll go over some more details as well. So for my final thoughts for Exla, in regards to the price action, if you're looking for a bullish move, if we pull back, you want to see it hold up at least 75 cents. And then what you want to see to the upside is a move to at least around 85 cents. We tested 83 cents on the day for the Friday. So I want to see us touch 85 and then essentially making that move to around 89 cents, which lines up right around where we have the 50 day. If we can make that move to 90, even better. If we end up having a severe pullback or a strong pullback, I I should say, I'd want to see us hold up at least 70 cents. There was also a comment on the last video, the gentleman was saying, hey, you need to look at the smaller time frames. When I do my videos and also when I'm trading my stocks, there's certain time frames that I pay attention to and I use these time frames over and over again. This is why I'm very effective when it comes to my predictions. So as far as the time frames that I'm using, because I know many of you might have a question about that, I used a four hour time frame. I also use a daily time frame like I use in my videos. And I also do use the weekly time frame. And using these strategies has given me a lot of success when it comes to volatile plays like these. You just can't rely on a one minute chart or a five minute chart. Unless you want to go in there day trading it, by all means, you can follow that. But I just noticed for my experience, just depending on a one minute chart and a five minute chart is just not enough. Also, when we went on Fintel, taking a look at the short interest information, it does continue to have short squeeze potential. So this is why you see a lot of volatility in the stock and you want to see that demand continue. Keep an eye on that volume. If we end up having that volume dying down and there's not a lot of demand inside of the market, this stock will pull back. And also don't forget, we are in some choppy market conditions. So when it comes to taking profits, please don't hesitate, have a game plan. Know what your entry is going to be and also know what your exit is going to be. Just don't sit down there and watch the stock and be like, yeah, it just keeps moving. I'm going to hold regardless. No, that is not the right way to go about doing it. That's where you have the greed coming in. And also anyone who's just jumping into this play, please don't wait to jump in when the stock is going to its highs while it's going to 90 and so forth. There are pullbacks that happen and it's even better to get it on a pullback because at least you could purchase some more shares and increase your profit potential. Plus on top of that, you don't have to be sweating right after you push the buy button. And the reason why I say that because I get those comments under my video saying, yo, Dre, I bought at the high. I don't know what happened. Do you see the stock going up again? I don't want to see that. I do appreciate you guys sharing your experiences and so on, but I also want to make sure that you're learning from your mistakes. And if you are watching my videos, I make a strong emphasis on risk management. If you can master your risk management, you're always going to be seeing success inside of the market. The people that lose the most money don't have risk management and they don't have have stop losses and so forth. So again, have a strategy. I'm emphasizing that so you guys don't forget it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see how this stock performs going into tomorrow.